welcome to the Good, the Bad, and the Tarot. I hope you guys are all doing well. And these are going to be your love forecasts for March 2017. Uh, I want to wish you guys a happy birthday, um, even though we aren't quite yet there yet. Uh, but those of you who do have birthdays at the end of March, happy birthday. Um, that is also why I am reading for you guys second after Pisces. Uh, so, and I think you also did uh, give me lots of likes last month, so thank you for that. You guys are awesome. For your reading today, I am going to be using the Steampunk Tarot as my primary tarot deck. This is a deck by um, Barbara Moore and Allie Fell. I will also be casting the runes today. These are fluorite runes that I have, uh, love using and I have used in the past for my readings. And then at the end of your reading, I will be pulling an oracle message from the Rumi Oracle by Alana Fairchild, which I recently purchased and have been using and love using. Um, even though the messages are lengthy, they are 100% uh, accurate and amazing. So I look forward to reading from those cards. Uh, what else do we have here? Sun enters Pisces on February the 18th. We had a solar eclipse in Pisces on the 26th of February on the new moon. And also we have Mercury entering Pisces on the 25th of February. March 2nd, Jupiter opposes Uranus. Uh, March 4th, Venus is going retrograde. And then on March 9th, we have Mars entering Taurus. And then on the 12th of March, we have a full moon in Virgo, Earth sign Virgo. At the end of March, we will have our, our new moon in uh, Aries. And that will essentially start Aries season. Uh, so your new beginnings and your um, changes and your solar return will start uh, in March, the end of March then. So really exciting. We are in eclipse season, so it's going to be, uh, I'm sensing a lot of change for all of us, changes in the air. And, you know, here in the Northern Hemisphere, we're going into spring. In the Southern Hemisphere, you guys are uh, already in summer, going into fall, I guess. I Well, still sort of in summer. Uh, but... There's a lot of change and a lot of excitement, so I'm excited to read for you guys today. Let's go ahead and do All that. All right, Aries, let's go ahead and get started. The cards have already been sorted. Calling on spirit, what are the love messages and energies that you have for the sign of Aries? For all my Aries, suns, moons, and risings, and those on the cusp. For their love reading for March, their love forecast for March, what will be so for Aries? What are the love messages and energies surrounding Aries? for the month of March, 2017. Aries suns, Aries moons, <clears throat> and Aries risings. What are the love messages, spirit, for the sign of Aries? And at the bottom of the deck, we have the Two of Pentacles. Very nice. Uh, <clears throat> I am going to be casting the runes. So if you want to uh, watch this, uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that. Or you can just fast forward to the beginning of the reading. I should probably put a timestamp down there. Spirit, what are the love messages and energies for Aries? My Aries suns, moons, and risings. Love messages and energies for Aries. Okay. We have one rune that is face down. I do not read the runes that are face down. Those are the unknowns. Alright. So I'm going to go ahead and turn over your cards. And we will be looking at the runes um, with the card. So I'm just going to move them off for now in the same position that I'm seeing them. All right. Nine of Pentacles in reverse crossed by the hangman. Right. Okay. And what comes below you is the Queen of Pentacles in reverse. What comes above you is the Seven of Wands in reverse. 
In your recent past, you have the Queen of Swords in reverse. In your near future, you have the Empress in reverse. How you see yourself, you have the Eight of Pentacles in reverse. In your environment, this is how your significant other may be viewing you or dealing with you. They have the Two of Cups in reverse. Your hopes and fears are the Eight of Cups in reverse, and your outcome is the Eight of Wands. All right. Um, lots of reversals, which can indicate blocked energy. Um, it can say that uh, there's too much or too little of the energy of that card. And as with uh, all tarot cards, not every card that's reversed means that it's automatically negative. And yes, the deck is shuffled. Okay. So I'm not going to redo this reading, and I don't care if there are negative comments. Um, I feel that this is a message uh, for some of you that I'm reading for. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and get through this. We're going to talk about why these cards are reversed and what they mean. But I just want to start off by talking about the card at the bottom of your deck, which does re re uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, does represent the overall theme or challenge of the reading. And the Two of Pentacles talks about infinite movement forward. It's juggling. It talks about... Um, Balance, and here we have Temperance underneath, underneath the sign of Sagittarius. Um, this is uh, here; she is really um, balancing. It's a balancing act, and it is talking about travel as well. So this could indicate uh, you really having to do a juggling act this month within a relationship or with two relationships. It can say that um, you are effectively um, creating energy flow in your life, right? Think about the Mobius strip here, which is actually her chain. And it's saying that the faster that she pedals, the faster she's gonna move. The more energy she puts into this juggling act, the further she's gonna go. So it's actually quite Quite a positive indication but it can also say that you know with your limited resources time physicality uh, money and uh, things in the material realm that you you do have to create a balance there um, because we are dealing with 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 the two twos do indicate duality as well so you walk into the month of March with the Nine of Pentacles in reverse, okay? So I feel some of you are emotionally or financially dependent on someone else right now. With this card upright, um, she has everything. She's got all of her basic needs met except for maybe love except for love. And when it's reversed, it's the same situation, but there is a lack of independence that I'm getting from this energy. Um, so it's really saying you, you, some of you Aries really do need to become financially and emotionally uh, independent of another person or circumstance so that this card can um, become unblocked. Um, and that can be for a couple of reasons. Uh, one is the major one here, which is what's crossing you, is the hangman. It's also the sign of Pisces. Uh, we are going into Pisces season, even while I'm reading this. And um, let's take a look here. I mean, the card is actually uh, in its reverse. But uh, if I were to just look at the card as what is helping or hindering you, it's having to wait. It really is. It's having to wait for something. It's having to, it's some huge block is basically being put on hold. Um, and a feeling of helplessness as well. A feeling of helplessness and of not being able to untie, unshackle yourself from this position. Um, until you really uh, learn to see things from a new perspective, until you gain this new understanding. Right. I 
things are on hold. Uh, and it's that waiting and it's that longing that is eating away at you. And it's really out of your control, this situation. But the hangman is a man-made construct in that he chooses to wait. He chooses to put his life on hold. He chooses to hang in there until there's a compromise. This can represent a very big delay for you in achieving some aspect of your life. But until then, it's saying perhaps you shouldn't make yourself financially or emotionally dependent on someone else. Perhaps that isn't such a good idea. Okay, let's look at the runes coming up for you. The first rune that I see talks about strength. Okay, Uru's strength. And the second one that I have, which I always get confused because they're two runes that look very similar, uh, is Ewa, safety. Strength and safety. Like, Uru's is really about the structures in your life, the support, um, I mean there's a lot about this rune actually written, there's quite a lot. I'm um, just noticing how my runes got changed color, they used to be really purple and now they're kind of not so much purple, but that's the nature of fluoride, it changes. But anyway, Uru's is about that stability, that strength, think of the strength card, right? in your challenge position and also uh, that strong bond and we also have here Ewa's safety which is about um, feeling protected that nothing can harm you and um, it's interesting that these are coming up with the hangman here um, because I do feel like it's, it, it has to do with your foundations. A lot of this has to do with your foundations. What makes you feel safe and what makes you feel supported? And if those things are on hold right now, is it diminishing your... making you feel less independent but again, I think that because the hangman is major arcana, it's still a perception. It's not necessarily reality. It's still a projection of a greater energy that you feel is out of your control. But again, it always comes back to how do you choose to deal with that energy. It's up to you. That is the choice that you have. In the recent past, I'm seeing two different people here. Um, if I go back into your, your, your far distant past, your recent past, we have the Queen of Swords. This could be a Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, leaving your life. I am seeing a situation where um, this is a split. So either you broke up with a Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, or they broke up with you. But the Queen of Swords in reverse is a nasty witch. She's someone that cuts people out of their life as she's like the Queen of Hearts and Alice in Wonderland off with their heads. So she can be very cruel and cutting with her words and she's not always very honest. She can just swing that sword so you can go watch out. It's not saying if this is your energy or not. It really depends uh, on your specific situation. It could be your energy. It may be someone that has air sign in their chart, but it is definitely someone that you know. We have two women here, female energies. So if you are a female watching this, could be another female or someone that has more feminine energy if it's a man. Um, what puts you here at the foundation of your reading is the Queen of Pentacles in reverse. Virgo, Taurus, Capricorn. Okay, now, who is the Queen of Pentacles in reverse? 
also a female energy or more receptive energy. If you are a man, it's a more feminine male energy. Queen of Pentacles in reverse is someone who focuses more on money or materialism. She also may be unhealthy in terms of how she takes care of herself. She may have mental illness. This can represent a mother who is ill. This can represent someone who is depressed or is overly materialistic and puts more focus on uh, things rather than people or experiences or love. Okay, so similar to her uh, reverse King of Pentacles counterpart. Um, there's actually a lot of similarity between the Nine of Pentacles in reverse and the Queen of Pentacles in reverse. And so I'm prone to thinking this is almost the same kind of energy that's put you here. Okay. It's a complacency. It's a laziness. It's a uh, putting things first attitude. It's a reliance on the material world, not the spiritual. Okay. It's emphasizing things over spirituality. And it's really an unhealthy situation. It's an unhealthy behavior. It's an unhealthy uh, mental state to be in. The Queen of Pentacles in reverse. Now, just to confuse you even further, we may also be talking about a Taurus or a Capricorn female here. Uh, because I do sometimes read court card reversals as just a different sign as opposed to a Virgo or Taurus or Capricorn. So it could be Virgo, Taurus, Capricorn, female energy here, or sun, moon, rising. So um, Aries with a uh, Virgo, Taurus or Capricorn, moon, or rising. Or just a Taurus or Capricorn female. But I, I really, I you know... Other than that, I'm just saying that I'm seeing similarities between your foundation and your current significator. And that is like uh, an unhealthy predisposition to the material world, to money and attachments, um, a lack of independence, a lack of um, standing on your own two feet emotionally, financially, something like that that's toxic. I'm going to move up here. Your crowning position. This is what you know to be true. It's what you're thinking and feeling in March. You have the Seven of Wands in reverse. Okay, she's falling down here. Backing down too easily. Not standing up for your beliefs. Here we have someone who is faced with challenges and she's going to take them on one by one. She's higher than these things. She's better than these things. She knows that she can take these on. And she will fight for her beliefs. Sevens are challenges. This is true. They're complex. But when it's reversed, it's saying that you're having a hard time finding your voice in this situation. You're not standing up for yourself. You're backing down too easily on something here. Now, this can represent other people. It can also just be a feeling. A feeling of uh, giving in too quickly or not speaking up enough. All those things that you would normally fight for and stand up for yourself regarding this fire energy, your energy here. You're not doing that. Now it can also represent uh, the impact of someone else on you, but normally I see this as what you're manifesting or what you could be manifesting because of your thoughts, but you haven't manifested yet. So you're thinking about backing down on something. I kind of feel what I'm getting for you, Aries, is you are... Uh, needing an emotional crutch right now. It's like you need to lean on someone else, whereas normally you would stand on your own and stand up for yourself and fight for what you want. But 
it's this powerful Pisces energy of a hey man here that's coming in and sapping your strength away. And it's maybe because you have to wait for something. It may be because things are on hold for you and you have to change the way you look at things. When you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. But I think you're feeling very needy currently. And it's because your focus has been too much on the material world. Too much on superficial things. What about your own spiritual development? What about your beliefs, your, your, your core, your, what brings you strength and safety when you stand on your own? Right? Okay, we go into the middle of March. We have the Empress in reverse. This is Taurus. I'm just calling it out here. This is a sign of Taurus, but it can also um, represent uh, your energy as well. So we have the power of Venus, which, as you know, goes, I mentioned in the beginning of my reading, goes Venus goes retrograde on March the 4th. And so this quite literally means that you are not open to love. You're not, you're not feeling it. Not only that, you're not staying in your feminine receptivity. You're not being a receptive feminine energy. Um, the Empress in Reverse, just to give you some qualities, she's mean. She's grouchy. <laughs> she's um, smothering. She may be ill, like actually not feeling well. And there's, there's a lot of health issues coming up here, actually. That I'm seeing. I'm gonna, and I've been reading cards for 10 years, so I'm gonna tell you right now if I see a bunch of cards that are signaling poor health, I'm gonna let you know, but it does clear up at the end. Um, this can actually indicate an infertile period of time, so it's not a good time to be going out and meeting new people. And at the crux of this, there's another rune here, by the way. Not these constraint. There is a constraint here. Uh, a need that's not being met. It could have to do with a physical need. It could have to do with sex. The chemistry isn't right. Um, not feeling open to love. You're just not ready. It's just not the right time. Whatever it is, there's a need that's not being met. It's making you... It's affecting you. But it's affecting you in a really big way. Um, you do need to be careful about burning yourself out here and also taking out your your feelings on other people um, and just being mean like I, I I just gonna say it when the empress is in reverse she can be mean she can also be very smothering and like uh, overbearing okay how you see yourself you have the eight of pentacles in reverse there's issues with focus here. There's issues with work. It could be a material situation. If this is a commitment that we're talking about, um, you know, the Eight of Pentacles is about discipline, focus, getting in the flow. It is a card of commitment. When it's reversed, it's like you, you don't, you know, you're not going to put in the work. You have absolutely removed yourself from thinking about this person or you're just not uh, focused. You're just not interested in committing yourself. Um, this can also say that uh, work isn't getting done or you're out of a job. Got to bring it back to the love life, though, which I enjoy doing very much. And this is a love reading, so. Um, I would just say you stopped thinking about someone or you stopped focusing on something. Uh, you're not studying this person anymore or you've just turned off your switch here. It's like the red light has gone off, you know, with the red light, sex light. <laughs> you're not, you know, you're not open to it. Something is fizzling out here because there's a constraint. You feel that there's a need that's not being met. Okay. In your environment, I am seeing issues within a close partnership here. Something is not right with the chemistry or you guys are not connecting. 
there could be some arguments. Now, this isn't horrible because the Two of Cups is still a very good card, even reversed. <clears throat> you may be at a distance from a partner. You may be separated from them. Um, and there's trouble with chemistry, which I'm seeing in both of these cards. Trouble, you know, getting it together here. And your partner may be viewing you or dealing with you. Um, like, let's just take a look here. See how... You have your back to them. Um, things are a bit upside down is what I'm saying. Things are a bit upside down. You're just not seeing things the same way. And it's affecting your chemistry. It's still not a bad situation, though. I just think that you're choosing not to focus on the relationship aspect anymore. You're not working at it. Um, that's the thing that's puzzling to me. It's kind of like you just turn it on and you turn it off. And I think that that could also be part of the issue. Gotta watch that. <clears throat> but I still feel like this person has um, a close relationship with you. Um, this could be a partner or a significant other. And they still do love you. They still have feelings for you. You're just not agreeing. You're just not seeing things the same way. Or the chemistry is just not right. It doesn't mean that it won't be right. It's just like one of those situations where... When Venus goes retrograde, it can really put a wrench into your love life. But don't worry, the story's not over yet. Your hopes and fears, you have the Eight of Cups in reverse. Okay. Eight of Cups in reverse is about not being able to walk away because there's too many good memories there. You would return to this relationship. Um... Your fear has to do with some kind of emotional attachment. That you couldn't walk away from a situation because there's uh, there's too much there. Even if you were unhappy, you wouldn't be able to walk away from it. Which is very interesting. Because upright, a fear would be of uh, losing... Uh, feeling very dissatisfied emotionally and needing to walk away, needing to withdraw. Even though this is something dear to your heart, it's just not. See how the cup's missing here? Something's always missing. Something's always missing here, but you're refusing to, to let go of it. You just, you're, this is what you're afraid of. That you won't be able to let go and that you would keep coming back. Which, I again, goes back into this emotional dependency. This feeling of just, you know, totally attaching yourself um, to someone else's ego here. Your outcome is the Eight of Wands, which is communications coming in. Things are going to happen very quickly. I have no doubt in my mind that uh, this does indicate some kind of passionate, quick-moving affair. So, uh, give it some time. Uh, you, you're getting this forecast so that you can understand how the energies are going to play out. I advise you to use this to your advantage. And if you come back to me and say, oh, none of this happened, it's probably because you took the advice and you realized that things are on hold for a reason. Well, I'm here to tell you, at the end of March, boom, you got this new moon in Aries on the 27th. And I really see the fireworks shooting off here for you. Things are really going to start moving forward. So, um, I don't think it's going to be a very active romantic month for you. I don't think it's going to be a hugely, uh, very, I think, sexy month for you. But I do think that you are going to learn a lot about yourself this month, Aries. And you're going to be given an opportunity and the choice is yours. How are you going to act? How are you going to react? Are you going to devote yourself and learn as much as you can and try and be a better person? Or are you going to turn your back and say, I'm done with this. I don't have time for this. Lose your focus. The choice is yours, right? I suggest um, 
I mean, I do think that at the end of the day, you're just juggling a lot. Um, but perhaps it's a bit too much. And this juggling act can't go on forever. So you are going to have to make some choices about where you devote your time and energy. But make sure that you give everyone a fair slice, okay? Um, and that includes yourself. Um, this self-love is going to be important and grounding yourself, enriching your life spiritually, finding uh, gratitude, being humble. Those are things you can absolutely put on, on your to-do list. I mean it. Staying humble and being grateful. It's going to take you so far. So, so, so far. Farther than you ever knew. I'll stop my rambling. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull an oracle message for you. Just absolutely love doing love readings. I think if I could only do love readings, I would. But um, I want to mention I do offer a general reading. If you're interested in checking out my monthly general readings, they're over on Patreon. I do spend a lot of time working on those, and I'm very proud of them. Um, I'll leave the link below in the description. You can, guys can go over there and check it out if you want. No obligation. Spirit, please help guide Aries this month on their highest path in love and in light. What does Aries need to know? Please help guide them. I'm being drawn to this card. Star Mother Arrakis. Gorgeous. All right, let's uh, so like I said, these messages are a little bit long, roughly 10 minutes each. So if you want to pause the video and come back and watch it after getting a drink or a snack or just continue watching, either way. Okay. It says, be the king who has made his own kingdom. Be the moon that has made her own summit. How much longer will you coo, coo like a pigeon? Empty your head of all mortal lusts and become life without breath. You will not call out for God anymore, for you have become immersed in God. Rumi. Your star mother, Arrakis, dances with your soul on the celestial inner planes. She dances in the embrace of Father Sky, shining white and pale, deep in devotion and the light behind all that is. Arrakis, dancing star of the heavens, incites our souls to feel the rhythm of life and surrender to it in flow, in grace, stumbling and in play. Like a child who thinks not of the right steps, but just moves with music and with joy, she reminds you to dance freely and from your heart. She reminds you that your soul is constantly dancing with the divine. What better way to connect with the joy and beauty of your soul than to mimic its movements? So dance, beloved. Let your being dance. Oh, Arrakis, your bright beauty penetrates even the darkest of minds to remember, remember, remember. She calls out, her voice is music to our hearts. You are a child of heaven. You are born of such regal stuff, dear dancing child of the stars. When you suffer, I send you my comfort as stars falling from the sky. When you triumph, my dance becomes wild and light erupts from my heart in all directions. The light becomes music, stirring within you with an urge, almost inexplicable and yet so very deep and real. To make music, to create art, to dance, to play, to be at one with the joyful creative energy that dwells within you, beloved. Star child, earth angel, divine creature, 
Your star mother keeps an eye on all the wild games happening in the sacred playground of the earth. She will care for you, righteous and true, shining divine justice and protection. No bully shall prevail over you. No bully from within you shall prevail either. No lies, deceit, or injustice shall temper your wild truths. Be demanding and claiming her love for you. Learn how to love yourself as she loves you, with wild, unconditional, passionate regard. Be like the child wailing for its mother. Ma, 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 come close. Then she descends, like a torrential downpour of devotional light. A tsunami of affection is unleashed. A rampaging cosmic tigress hurtles towards you, her claws gripping the fabric of the skies as she rushes to protect her beloved cub. She will fight for you against the forces that would dull, dull you and dumb you down, obscure your brilliance, and stultify your free-form dance into strict choreographed movements. She will pour her luminous essence into every crevice of your demanding soul. Nothing can resist her light. All shall be washed and revived in the outpouring of her luminous love. Then, sated and content, you are the child so secure in the love of the mother. You trust in life implicitly and in what is brought to your door. You do not succumb to untruths. You do not resist because you are safe, held in the love of the mother. You have no need to resist. What is there to resist? Nothing. There is only the loving truth in your world and all's at peace in your heart. And should there be cause to stand up and fight for love, for freedom, for light, for her truths of unconditional life, respected and honored, well, you shall be particularly equipped for success. When there is that war to fight, you shall be the warrior who defends the motherland, absolute in your devotion to her ways and empowered through her vast, indefatigable, triumphant power. And shall you bludgeon your way with brute force and fear? Of course not. So here is your guidance. Lay down your old weapons, for new technology awaits you. It is the most magnificent of forces, that of divine alignment, of surrender to the Star Mother and her way of luminous potency. From her great vantage point, the vastest problems of our earthly mindsets are merely in need of a quick whipping by the tail of a comet. And this she easily achieves by flicking a strand of her hair or poking out her tongue. In the hands of a greater being, even your deepest trials will succumb to divine victory. Your ability to take the journey will be strengthened, and your success only a matter of the passing of time. Can you give yourself this gift, this blessing of the love, power, and protection of your star heritage? We all descend from the stars, but some of us are asked to remember, to acknowledge, the divine parentage from which we come, and to allow the innate div divine dignity within to restore us to faith in the path here on earth. No matter how dark life on earth may seem at times, when we remember our holy heritage, we can also realize, ah yes, I am blessed, held as one with the mother who shall not be deterred from a great holy purpose. I shall prevail. I forgot that and feared, but now I remember and am determined once more. Then you shall feel joy and be inclined to dance, to sing, to make your art, and to live fearlessly once again. Sacred Honoring Ritual Dear Aries, open your hands up above your head and say, through unconditional love and divine mercy, through the blessings of the ancient master and sages, including Brother Rumi, who loves without condition, I call upon the blessings of the stars, the remembrance of my divine heritage, and the gift of spiritual success. 
I call upon the assurance of my soul's triumph and the luminous embrace of the Holy Mother. I honor my soul's need for art and for expression and for creativity now from a pure and loving place within me. So be it. You have finished your sacred honoring ritual. And that, Aries, concludes my reading today for you. May you guys go in peace, love, and light, and many blessings to all of you.